Hey Math 43, let's get going with chapter eight here. So we're finally gonna learn about confidence intervals, all right? This is where we make a guess about our parameter based on a statistic. And we're gonna do this in two different lands, mean land and proportion land. And those are gonna tie into our sampling distributions from chapter seven where we had the sampling distribution for averages and the sampling distribution for proportions or get numerical and categorical data. So let's take a look at our learning outcomes. We wanna calculate and interpret confidence intervals for estimating a population proportion. Right, we wanna calculate and interpret confidence intervals for estimating a population mean. And then we wanna calculate the sample size required to estimate a population mean or proportion given a desired confidence level and margin of error. So you're gonna hear me talk about these two problems is what I would say the forward problems. These are the, the usual version and this is the backwards problem. All right, so forward, when I give you a bunch of data, you get me a confidence interval. Backward, I give you a margin of error and a confidence level and you get me the sample size. And again, we're gonna do this in proportion land and mean land. And this is gonna tie into our two sampling distributions. If you remember the sampling distribution for proportions looks something like this. Right? And for normality, I needed NP greater than or equal to 10 and N1 minus P greater than or equal to 10. And we wanted the sample size small relative to the population. For mean land here, we had that averages are normally distributed by that central limit theorem, pending that our sample size is 30 or higher, or the population distribution is normal. Um, and yeah, we had, yeah, these were our standard errors, right? These numbers over here. So center, standard error, center, standard error. Or you could say this is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. A lot of words getting thrown out there. But we're gonna use these numbers to construct a confidence interval. And then we need to interpret the interval, all right? So when you hear me talk about point estimate, a point estimate of a parameter is a single number. It is one number that is based on sample data. And we've been calling this statistics all semester long. So what we're gonna do with example one is just make sure we have the symbols down. Do we know what each symbol stands for? And again, these aren't new to us, but they're gonna seem new. And just remember, we've seen all of these symbols before. So it says, determine the point estimates. All right, so this is a, a different vocab term for get me the statistics and I wanna work on their symbols, their notation, so that we have the same notation as we move forward. So get me the stats and symbols for the following parameters, okay? So let's scoot this up and see if we can pick apart all of our point estimates. So again, anytime you hear point estimate, that's a new vocab term for a statistic. So we know the population mean mu, right? If I had a population and I ran that census, and I got an average, that would be the population mean. This is a parameter. What is the statistic that goes with this parameter? Again, as a symbol. So what is the sample population, right? This is the population mean. What does the sample mean? I think I just said, what is the sample population? Ignore that. I'm asking you for what is the sample mean? What is the statistic, All right? And we have a symbol for that. We call that X bar, All right? So again, nothing you haven't seen. We're just throwing out this new vocab term of point estimate this time. All right, and again, not again, but let, let's reiterate, this is one number, all right? That's why it's called a point estimate, is literally one point on the x-axis. So the point estimate of the population standard deviation sigma, and this is lowercase sigma. So what is the sample standard deviation, right? That's what the point estimate is, one number. So what symbol do we have for sample standard deviation? Well, we've been calling that S, all right? Because again, recall, statistics, they have letters that come from our alphabet, and typically parameters have numbers that come from the Greek alphabet. There's exceptions to that, but that, that's the gist of it. All right, so variance, if we remember population variance, that is sigma squared, right? and that we used to have to calculate this number by hand and then square root it to get to the standard deviation. Now we just have technology to do that. But if I wanna talk about the sample variance, that's gonna be S squared. All right. 
And last but not least, we've got what's the point estimate for the population proportion, P. Now here's the one exception. Typically books will use the Greek alphabet for parameters. So your book, it differs in that it, it doesn't use the Greek alphabet here, it uses the letter P, which is technically our alphabet. And with that, for sample proportion, we've been dealing with this all last chapter. All right, your book will call it P prime, which is great. So we've got our four parameters and our four statistics. So let me just scoop this up and make sure I write all this out so we're all on the same page. All right, so here are parameters, the four that we're gonna well, four of the ones that we're going to deal with. We're going to have the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, and a proportion. And again, instead of running a census and finding these four numbers, I'm going to select a sample and crunch numbers from my sample, and we call those statistics. And they are respectively x bar, s, s squared, and p prime. And again, like I said, most books would have used pi here. They would have used the Greek alphabet pi, or Greek alphabet, Greek letter pi, and then our alphabet for P. But we're not doing that in this book, so let me erase that. All right, there we go. So we've got all of these statistics are gonna approximate these parameters. We're gonna estimate. So again, instead of running a census and finding the population mean, I'm gonna find the sample mean and give myself a little margin of error, a little wiggle room on each side. All right. Instead of finding the population proportion by running a census, I'm gonna find a sample proportion and give myself a little bit of wiggle room on each side, which we're gonna call a margin of error. All right, so when we flip to the next page, we're gonna do one more example, and then we're going to revisit an activity that we did on the very first um, lecture, and back in chapter one you did this activity, whether it was in class with me or, or we kind of faked it um, on these videos, but we're gonna revisit that activity. I'm gonna use my numbers from that day. You can use your numbers. Um, and we would get slightly different answers, but they'd still all mean the same thing. But that, that's what we're doing on the next page. All right, so I'll, I'll catch you in a little bit. Bye.